Ladies and gentlemen, and never about in between, I am once again, or for the very first time, some guy, the adventure game enthusiast that has been over analyzing and giving you a walkthrough of Undercover Missions Curse. We're on to chapter 6 now. We're in the home stretch. Just three more chapters to go, so let's keep on keeping on, folks, and pick up right where we left off. They captured Leonid Korbernikov. Maybe I can free him. Why did they spare him anyway? And why did I forget who that guy is? I think he's the first officer. Now I ain't prejudiced or anything, I'm a Slav myself. I'm just having a hard time remembering who these characters are because none of them really left an impression upon me. Oh well, that could just be a me problem. For all I know, you're thoroughly attached to this cast of characters. Well, at any rate, we got a new area to explore. The Hallway Hatch. And this is a pretty happening place. Look at all the stuff I can interact with. I may still need them. Those work gloves are just working their way all over the damn sub. Or maybe it's just not the same pair showing up over and over again. But our lady can't tell the difference because, you know, all work gloves look alike to her. Damn glovist. Yes, it has something to do with the light. Just a moment. Just a moment. Your call is on hold. We value you as a customer. I wonder if these guys hired like the lady who does the little robot phone voice. <gasps> Maybe they just use that software to be the voice actress. That would explain the thorough lack of emotion. Finally. Now to be honest with you, I'm not sure if that's important at all, but I did it and I beat the game. So maybe the two are connected. Maybe it's just another red herring. So after doing something that may or may not be important at all, I'm outside of the first officer's room. And oh no, something's different here. There's a passcode lock on his door all of a sudden. Or maybe it was always there, but the key card just overrid. Okay, whatever. Continue with the locks, be damned. All that matters here is that we gotta get inside this puppy. And that's a pretty straightforward process. Just use the screwdriver on the screws and then oh no. So we're gonna need some sort of lubricant to loosen up that nut. Now, where do you guys think you should go looking for lube? Hmm, how about in the sailor's bedroom? Hey, you can be lonely deep under sea with just you and a hundred dudes. Well, I mean, you can always use spit, but never mind that. This game is pretty odd in the sense that it likes to put important items in places you've already looked. Now, the only way I found this lube was just by re-clicking through everything like I'm doing now. Because pretty much that's how you have to play the game, because the dev likes to place objects in places you've already checked. Or our heroine just doesn't like to pick up everything useful in this given area. I guess she's not that much of a kleptomaniac to be an adventure game star. But needless to say, you put the lube on the missing screw and bada bing bada boom. Oh my god, it's the exact same puzzle we faced before. Wow. Repeating puzzles. Hmm. Yeah, we must be towards the end, because it appears that the dev's running on fumes. At least when it comes to puzzle design. Although admittedly, there is a new wrinkle here. After cutting the tube with the scalpel, you place the scalpel on the other connector and... Ta-da! The door is open now. I hope that works. I hear a click. I hope I applied everything correctly. Hmm. The first officer is nowhere in sight. Color me surprised that the first officer isn't hanging out in his room after mercenaries invade this sub. So let's go ahead and pick up the only item we need from this room right now. A band-aid. Yeah, we're gonna need that later. So we got the band-aid from the first officer's drawer, which we emptied out before. So I guess we put the band-aid in there. Oh god, it hasn't been used. Oh well, let's move on to some real excitement now. Oops. There are too many at once. And I know we just used up all of our lube. What? I'm not being dirty. We could throw them to the ground and they could fall over or something. Whatever, we sprayed a fire extinguisher on a man and killed him, so I don't want to hear nothing. There are three guards. It's too many to get rid of at once. If only it was two dudes. Then we could have taken them all down. But three, now nah, three's our limit. Because it's an impossibility to have a triple homicide. So because we got three dudes hanging out in front of the weapons officer's office, we know that there's now something or someone important in there. And boy, aren't these mercenaries just so, so intimidating. Just staying around, not doing anything, not moving, not talking, just little statues. So anywho, let's go ahead and distract these guys by turning the alarm on. Yeah, in the bridge. Turn the alarm on. And then just, I guess, go back and they're gone. The trick with the alarm worked. The guards are gone. I must hurry now. Gordobelnikov is tied up and unconscious. I need to get him conscious again. It's quite improbable that he knocked himself out. Guess I can now cross Leonid off my list of suspects. 
Well, obviously, we gotta wake this guy up. So that's gonna require some smelling salts that we get out of the sick bay by using the screwdriver on the little locked chest. Because as we all know, you gotta keep your meds locked up around sailors. Is that a stereotype or am I just talking? Never mind. From here, we also gotta get the gas mask that's there. We just smash it with the monkey wrench. And then we patch up the gas mask with the band-aid we found. Yeah. The whole reason for us to get into the first officer's room was to get a band-aid. The whole reason to take off that little pin pad and to search for lube and to use up our scalpel. That was just for a band-aid. Clearly, it would be an impossibility to find a damn band-aid in the sick bay. Oh, no, 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 no. We gotta do some hardcore adventure gaming to earn our band-aid and undercover missions curse. All right, let's go talk to this guy now that we have all the necessary items to, well, talk to him. He's waking up. Leonid. Hello, princess. Wakey, wakey. All right, all right. How are you? What do you think? You'll survive. Status update. There was an explosion and a fire in the radio room. The fire is now gone, but there is still a high concentration of extinguishing gas in some areas. The crew is in the exit area, and I suspect they are unconscious. The door is welded shut. Good. Whoa, that line seemed out of place there. Or maybe she just really hates the crew of this sub. I will take care of Sobolev. Yeah, you go ahead and take care of that guy who we didn't talk about at all in our conversation. Ah, we should be lenient on him. He's probably got some substantial head trauma from being knocked out. Try to send an emergency signal. I don't know who's behind it yet, or who gave you that lump on your head. Here is a gas mask. There is still a high concentration of fire extinguishing gas in some of the other rooms. Well, okay, we got our objective now. Try to send an emergency signal, but we can't go to the radio room because that's blown up. And hey, wait a minute. How the hell did that piggy bank get back there? We chopped it up with a bread knife. Well, continuity be damned, so let's head over to the emergency pod and try to get inside of it. That's the corridor to the escape vessel. Damn, that's... Well, let's go ahead and grab a piece of this pipe hanging out over here with our work gloves. And oh yeah, be sure to double grab it. So now we got this little bit of metal. What the hell are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to use it on this door, along with our monkey wrench, and hey, we're inside the emergency pod. Thank God this wasn't an emergency, because having to do all this convoluted stuff could really cost someone their lives in an actual emergency. That's the escape vessel, which the team can use in case of an emergency. So all we gotta do in here is click on the power system for the escape vessel, and then play a minigame. And oh my god, haven't we seen this minigame before? A rinse and repeat. What can I say other than this game must be eco-conscious? Because it really seems to like to recycle itself. Here we go. The power in the vessel is back on, and I should be able to send the emergency signal. Oh wait, sorry, I had to click on it again because, you know, she didn't do it automatically. The emergency signal has been activated. Now it's best to return to the bridge. But isn't that where all the mercenaries ran off to because we set the alarm? It doesn't seem like a good idea to go to the bridge, but hey, we're doing it anyway. What the hell happened to those mercenaries? Leonid, I have activated the emergency signal. Were you able to find Sobolev? No, not yet. A patrol boat is alongside. He's probably there. Good. I will go and take a look. Good luck. If I can, I'll bring Kursk to safety. Then the hatch will be closed, and there will be no way back to the boat. I understand. I'm used to depending only on me. Alright, let me see if I get this straight. This guy's probably going to try to take command over the sub again, and probably submerge it so all the mercenaries are stuck on the boat. But we're going to get off the sub before that and try to get on the boat with all the mercenaries and take them down or something. Well... We needn't worry about any of that because none of that's going to happen at all. What is going to happen? Well, you're going to have to find out next time on Chapter 7 of Undercover Missions Curse. Have a good day, guys.